Welcome back. Here are the big news breaks on CNBC TV 18. This is what we're given to understand. The GST Council is likely to bring down the tax on restaurants to 5%. But this is uh, not necessarily great news for restaurant owners because input tax credit will be done away with. So we need to add that to that flyer. It's 5% tax on restaurants without ITC. There is going to be a massive pruning of 28% slab. Only 50 items will be in the 28% slab uh, is the recommendation of the GST Council. Demerit goods will continue, of course, in the 28% slab. Luxury items, some white goods uh, will remain and also some construction-related uh, material will continue to remain in the 28% slab. The Assam Finance Minister also telling us that items in the 18% slab may also be uh, rejigged. We could see some revisions from 18 down to 12 and in fact down to 5 as well. Uh, on the composition scheme, the cap has been hiked to 2 crore rupees. Uh, so that is what we're given to understand. Uh, and uh, these are some of the big ticket decisions that we expect the GST Council to make in a short while from now. 1% uh, rate for the composition scheme for both traders and manufacturers. Those are some of the big news breaks here. Let's get back to our tax panel now. MS Money of Deloitte India, Hari Shankar Subramaniam of EY, Rohan Shah, uh, tax expert, Pratik Jain of PwC, Suresh Nandlal Rohira of Grand Thornton, also here with us, and Archit uh, from Clear Tax uh, with us here as well. Uh, gentlemen, um, you know, let's come back to uh, issues that uh, we could perhaps see being addressed on the compliance front. So far, uh, at least I haven't been able to get anything specific in terms of what the announcements could be. Uh, but what is it that you're working with? Rohan Shah, let me start by asking you, sir, what are you working with in terms of uh, reduction of compliance burden? No, I think one part of this was the whole expansion of this uh, composition scheme. And I services and services being included especially in the context of job work i think was one of the needs of the hour because many industries really are supported by job workers and the amount of employment we generate over there is absolutely massive so i think how that composition scheme is you know effectively going to map uh, the other situation is in that composition one of the panelists said earlier that you know there really should not be a concept of input tax credit uh, because it's a composition, it's a flatted out mm. rate. But again, there have been situations where uh, people are not buying from the manufacturers or traders who fall there because they are losing that credit. And I think to that extent, you know, that is again a correction which is required effectively to be made. And for me, staying with that composition again, the factor of allowing interstate uh, transactions to also fall within that composition scheme becomes important. So while, you know, when we talk of compliance and procedure, that's a vast universe out there. But if the focus of this whole thing mm. is really facilitating small and medium, then I think somewhere that composition scheme mm. becoming more robust uh, is important. The only other mm. thing that I'm a little worried about there is, there are already murmurs saying that people are manipulating mm. composition, so government is going to come up with some yeah. sort of measures to say if you have related entities or if mm. you have entities who effectively are under mm. sort of a common management type concept, you will not get this benefit. Right. So for me, I'm really looking out at that one because if that one eases out, okay. then I think a lot of small, medium peop uh, you know, traders and manufacturers will really feel comforted. Okay. Hari, you know, uh, we were discussing this yesterday as well. Uh, and in your interaction with government officials, what is the sense that you get? Uh, you know, there have been concerns on compliance. Uh, Rohan Shah talking about possible manipulation of the composition scheme. Uh, so all of this is obviously working and weighing on the minds of the government as well as government officials as they uh, try and conclude things at the GST Council meeting. How do you see them responding to this? So compliance has been a pain point, and I, I don't know whether compliance is... It, it's incorrect to say that compliance has not been a pain point across the sectors, you know. Whether you're talking of MSME, whether you're talking of large companies, issues on stability of the GSTN system, and so on and so forth. So my, my, my sense is they, they can do two things, you know. And what's been really coming out in the last, uh, I would say, it, uh, two to three uh, weeks is... One is the, the entire concept of allowing everyone to file quarterly, you know. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. And when they mean quarterly, do they mean quarterly of only the 3B? 
for a certain period of time or they mean quarterly at even at a transaction level because if it's quarterly at a transaction level i really don't know how gstn is going to behave with that volume of transactions mm. the second is that at one stage they even thought they will continue with the summary return of 3b till march and maybe start the entire transaction only in april because they anyway four months behind schedule only july returns for gstr 1 and 2 has, mm. has gone through no so that's another possibility that could happen no and again the transaction itself may be applicable only for people beyond the threshold so mm. there are several things that they will do because if you really look at the fun problem and the pain the pain is of complying because yeah. of the multiple returns the pain is of matching mm. because of the smaller guys finding it difficult yeah. but at the same time the whole concept of matching was brought about mm. so as to track the value chain and avoid evasion you know so the noise is also because of the fact that there is a fear and there is a, a certain amount of evasion that's happening you know so they could react in many ways in mm. my view quarterly could be one which i don't know how quarterly is going to work if it's only for 3b as a summary return or also for transaction which i believe will be a problem or they will just defer it for some time yeah. allow systems to stabilize yeah. and then start a uh, transaction level for everybody or for somebody beyond the threshold you know? so there could be several aspects that they are looking at yeah. from what i've been hearing there are couple of options they were they were looking at but quarterly is what you keep hearing mm. in the last one week or so yeah uh, pratik let me come back to you and uh, let's revisit this restaurant issue because clearly uh, uh, you know most of you seem to be in consensus that the decision to do away with input tax credit would be a fundamental flaw as far as the gst design itself is concerned uh we also heard from speciality restaurants uh, hoping that this isn't the case but i am given to understand from uh, very highly placed sources that this seems to be almost a done deal now uh, that this is what the decision is of the gst council um and I, i am also given to understand that the council is aware of the fact that this will go down perhaps poorly with some of the high end restaurants uh you know so so do you believe that Uh, that this this is again going to be one of those contentious issues that uh, that we're now going to see uh, the clamor for a review yes uh, as i said from a policy standpoint it does not does not look uh, like a good policy up to 2 crores if you have competition and restaurants are covered in the competition then any with a smaller restaurants don't need to bother they just need to pay 1% and forget about uh, mm. anything else so then if you make 5% Uh, for all other restaurants then essentially you're saying that i'm doing it for the bigger restaurants right because up to 2 crores anyway you have a, a option for uh, competition and bigger restaurant as you saw in your program the survival back they don't want it right also as i said just to reiterate yeah. that point that if i am a big restaurant and i have taken a place on rent uh, today i am getting an offset of 18% uh, gst charge on rental tomorrow i do i won't get the uh, the offset so what would i do i mean what's a <laughs> normal tendency i would ask uh, uh, the landowner or a landlord uh, to charge me in cash because i don't want to pay that uh, 18% to start with and then there will be demand uh, to roll back that 18% and make it that 18% to 12% because you know i am not getting input credit so where will mm. you go i mean any policy mm. which restricts the credits or breaks the chain is not a good idea why are we saying mm. that real estate should be uh, should come under gst why are we saying petroleum products would come under gst because at some level there is a mm. cascading mm. impact of taxes this cascading uh, cascading yeah. would continue to happen and suppose they give an option to say that okay mm. you can charge 12% with credit then as a consumer i will not like right. that uh, wherever the 12% is mentioned on the invoice i will go and fight with the restaurant guy saying that you know other guy is charging 5% So so from whatever angle you look yeah. at it does not look like a good policy and and implementation yeah. would be a challenge one last point is that the transition from this 18% to 12% will also mm. be painful because you will have certain credits in your books as of now mm. because you would have claimed that credit assuming that you know you are you are going to get credit and suddenly one day you are saying 5% so what will happen to the credit that i have already accumulated in my books whether i'll have to reverse that can i claim that how right. will i uh follow the anti profiteering mm. rules mm. you get into more and more complications yeah. and certainly it's not a good idea okay not a good idea on that issue of what could be included into the gst ambit and there was a lot of uh, excitement around the possibility of real estate uh, being included in the ambit of the gst uh, and look uh, let's be very clear it hasn't even been officially uh, discussed at the level of the gst council in any meaningful way in fact the hope was that it would perhaps be taken up today but i'm given to understand that uh, it hasn't really been taken up today money was that a realistic expectation that we are going to start to see uh, the uh, you know 
items like real estate which are outside the ambit now move towards being included in the GST regime? Yes, yeah, Shireen, inclusion of real estate in GST is certainly a very uh, good step, but I would say that a medium to long term yeah. objective that the government has set for itself. And uh, I would not be too surprised if the GST Council did not get time to discuss that uh, today in the meeting. Uh, because yeah. we have a GST today which is yet to stabilize in terms of rates, in terms of provisions, in terms of the GST network. Now, into this, if we add a new hmm. dimension of including real estate from now, uh, that possibly is not something which they would want to do in the immediate present. We also have to bear in mind that in order to include real estate under GST, uh, we will need significant parliamentary yeah. processes to be completed. It is not something which the GST right. Council can decide today and uh, something which can come into force hmm. from, the, from next month. And uh, therefore, if mm. they have put that on a bit of a back burner by saying, let's take care of the immediate issues right. first and inclusion and the expanding mm. the GST basket to include real estate and not only real estate, even electricity for that matter, uh, yeah. let us do that as phase two. Uh, that seems to me to be a very mature approach. Okay, gentlemen, uh, let's take another break while we can uh, as we wait for the GST Council meeting to conclude and the Finance Minister to address uh, the media. Remember, this is the 23rd meeting. Gohati is playing host to it. Uh, and the political war of words is underway. The Congress trying to stake claim for what it believes is the effort it's made to try and bring down the GST rates in the 28% slab specifically. Uh, we've got the former Finance Minister Peter Dhamram tweeting and we've got the Assam uh, Finance Minister tweeting meeting right back saying that uh, don't resort to low uh, and cheap tricks that and more when we return here on CNBC TV 18.